Hey, we're here at the Woods booth this morning and we found this cool little cedar. This is brand new this year and this one is four foot wide. Four foot is perfect for our little subcompact tractors. If you get any bigger than that, it's just gonna be just too much for them to lift. In fact, we have seen that uh, there's been larger cedars out for a long time. We just simply haven't been able to handle them on a subcompact tractor. Well, the folks at Woods have built this smaller one, which works well. There's a few things we ought to look at on this thing, just to kind of see how it works. On the front here, we have, uh, I don't know, this little roller here with spikes on it, and that can be turned at any angle. Now, this is just like the bigger cedars that you've seen in the past. If you're going through a, a standing field of grass or that you want to just reseed a little bit, you'll have these straight like this, horizontal like this. If you, if you want to do something more aggressive, you'll turn them at an angle and that'll stir the ground a lot more. Now, in addition to this spiked roller, there's a disc blade option. And those discs, again, can be turned to be more aggressive or less aggressive. And that'll allow you to do even more aggressive tillage while you're using this thing. On the back end, we see this uh, cultipacker. Now these are nylon cultipacker wheels. Usually you see them, they're cast iron. The nylon we have to do on this small one, again, because of weight, especially this far back from the three-point hitch, we just simply wouldn't be able to pick up that much cast iron weight back there. So that gets to one of the disadvantages we're gonna see of this little guy. It's not gonna cut quite as good as a heavier cedar. It's, you know, it, you're just gonna have some difficulty when compared to that heavier cedar. But you can usually resolve that just by going over it multiple times. So we need to go over the plot multiple times because this cedar is not heavy enough necessarily to do a, a, a thick covering of, of grass with, with just one trip over. So that we probably need to just take it off and use our tiller, right? Well, that's what the guys at Woods were telling me you don't have to do. Right here, there's a pin that we can take out and we can turn off the cedar such that we can use those discs. We could even put a little more angle in them. We could use those discs and the cultivator and this middle spike roller that you see. It's kind of an all-in-one pass tool. So even when you have to go over multiple times, you don't have to be seeding it every time and that saves that all expensive seed. And it's real easy, just with one pin right here, this spike roller can just freely roll and it doesn't turn the whole seeder mechanism. Now that also describes how the seeder works. It's ground driven right here with this spike roller, the one in the middle. So there's no worry about the seeding rate change as you go a different speed. Some seeders we've seen are driven electrically or with some sort of a constant rate delivery mechanism. This one, since it's ground driven, won't have any issue. You can go slow, you can go faster. Um, I'm not sure how fast you can go and do a good job of seeding, but it's certainly not related to the uh, speed of the roller here turning. So let's talk about how you can test your seeding rate. We pay $125 for a 50 pound bag of seed. It's difficult for me when I get out and I, I start guesstimating how much the rate is or am I, am I applying enough seed? Oh, I better just turn it up a little extra because I may go too fast. I, I find that really difficult. Well, we talked about the ground driven mechanism and how that helps us with the uh, seeding rate. But we also have a special way to calibrate this thing. There's a chart that comes in the manual and you use this little tray here that catches the seed. When you put it all the way in, it catches the seed from two of these seed tubes. Then with this crank here, you rotate it a set number of times per the chart. So you can then weigh how much seed comes out of here and deduce your actual application rate. So we adjust this lever to adjust the seeding rate and then we'll run the test again until we get the appropriate amount of seed. Again, this is all listed in a chart, how many revolutions to turn this, depending on your type of seed. Uh, the entire list of seed types that uh, this seeder has been tested with is, is also listed in the, that chart. We can actually plant two seeds at the same time. This front seed box is for most of your cold season grasses, and this rear seed box is mainly for legumes. This is an option. You only have to have one of the seed boxes. The cultipacker on the back is an option. You can choose which uh, mechanism you want here, whether you want the spiked roller or the disc, as I talked about before. This one's attached to the three-point hitch. You'll notice there is no PTO connection. The, it's only ground driven. If you want to run on your UTV, you can actually get a pull type hitch attachment to convert the three-point to a pull type unit. You can also get a set of what I would call lift assist wheels on the back that are electronically raised and lowered uh, with a, a little electric actuator so that you can use it in a pull type approach with any UTV like 
say, a gator. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of the wood cedar. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this thing. Uh, maybe we'll see if we can get one out to our property sometime and, and give it a run through and see if we can make anything grow, because that's really what counts, right? Hey, I hope you've enjoyed it. Another video here from the Farm Progress Show. And we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. It's hard because it's so dusty around here. It really is. It really is. I think that's better, don't you? I believe you're still recording, by the way. Oh, I am. That was really good stuff. That was good. I'll put that at the end. Bloopers. Ha, 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 ha.